Good evening, this is CTV News for Wednesday, September 17th. I'm Patricia Vallone, glad you could join us tonight. Well, according to the state, the federal government has placed 2,800 unaccompanied children with sponsor families in Maryland. Today, state officials announced three community resources aimed at helping the increasing population of kids who have crossed the border into the U.S. from Central America. One is Buscando, which is a website that allows users to find specific resources in their area. Another is 211 Maryland. The number helps those caring for these children to connect with services in their communities. The third is the Community Resource Guide, which provides information about other resources. The overwhelming majority of these kids are placed with family members that are already in this country. So it's a, a mother, a cousin, a, a uncle, or a family member who's already in this country. And they may not know exactly where to go. So part of our strategy has been to put the information out there and find as many avenues as we can, hence the three different ways, to find as many avenues as we can to get that information out there for folks who need it. If you'd like more information, you can log on to Maryland.gov. Well, many Prince George's students are just now getting back into their school routines. For many young people, adjusting to a new grade and harder homework can be a challenge. But at CTV, Stephen Graves explains, for many unaccompanied minors, the struggle to adapt sometimes goes much deeper. At the International Student Counseling Offices in Adelphi, it's a new beginning. Thousands of future students will pass through looking to join Prince George's County Public Schools. They'll fill out forms and have to show important documents like anyone else. But for unaccompanied minors like William from Guatemala, this process means more than you can imagine. Muchas de este secuestros, así, delincuencia ahí en los lugares, que hasta incluso no... When he made it to Texas, uh, he got lost, he got separated from his group, and he was alone, and, and so um, that was one of the most difficult things. The 17-year-old left his mother, grandmother, and brothers all behind to take on this venture. He says the opportunity provides him an educational safe haven that he didn't once have. Hasta incluso en las aldeas se metían a robar las cosas de las personas, todo. Like drug addicts, uh, peer pressure is pretty bad over there, so gangs. The gangs have infiltrated the, the area so much that they control, sometimes they control the road to get from, from their house to the, to the, uh, to the school. Hector Aginiga is a counselor who sees numerous immigrant students pass through the center. He says they face issues such as sexual assault and even trust issues. Your heart goes out to them as far as what, you know, what they've gone through. and and we want to give them as much support as we can uh, and help, help the families. These are our children and they, they, they live in our community, they're part of our, our school system and so we have the, the responsibility to educate them and make sure that they're receiving the services that they need and that they deserve. As for William and his future, well, he wants to become a preacher one day. It's a dream he can now see becoming a reality thanks to this opportunity. For CTV News, this is Stephen Graves reporting. And county schools offer a number of services, including counseling groups and special classes for these students. Federal law prohibits officials from asking about a child's immigrant status during the enrollment process. Well, Prince George's County Executive Rashern Baker and other officials kick off an affordable health care summit. This afternoon, Baker and other leaders spoke with providers at Oxon Hill Manor about the importance of inexpensive medical care for families. The summit was a chance to help prepare representatives for the launch of the state's new online health exchange so they can better assist people who want to this enroll in the plan. This today, you in here today, are when we actually start the real work. When we actually start rolling up our sleeves and making sure that throughout Prince George's County, we live up to the promise that at least I made, that everyone in this county will have access to affordable health care, quality health care. One of the great benefits of the Affordable Care Act is that there's now, you know, guaranteed renewability. So people will, the carriers then will renew people into their current coverage, but there's a big catch. And that, that catch is they will not re, be able to renew them into their financial assistance. So for the 80% of folks who are currently in qualified health plans, getting financial assistance, that's why it's so critically important. And Maryland's new health insurance website will launch when enrollment opens again in November.